We've been talking about what a complex sentence is. So through the course of this week, we're just gonna continue to do some practice, really highlighting the things that make them really confusing. For right now, you're allowed to use your subordinating conjunctions list, but you do need to get used to finding them on your own. So anything that we go through on the notes that's up here that is not on your paper, you need to write down. This is um, repeated practice to help you become um, familiar with all of these vocabulary terms and formulas. So first we have to know what is a complex sentence. It is a sentence that's made up of one independent clause and one or more dependent clauses. So on your paper, you need to add that little plus sign to the dependent clause to show that you could have more than one dependent clause. And a dependent clause is a subordinating conjunction that's followed by a subject and a verb. And there are three different formulas that we can use for this. Our dependent clause could be at the beginning, and if that were the case, we'd see a subordinating conjunction that's followed by a subject and a verb. And we know that if that subordinating conjunction is at the beginning and that dependent clause is at the beginning, then it's being used as a transition and it needs a comma. Or we could move our dependent clause to the end, in which case our subordinating conjunction would be somewhere in the middle of the sentence followed by a subject and a verb. And sometimes we'll see that our dependent clause comes in the middle of a subject and a verb. So you'd see the subordinates, the subject, and then see a subordinating conjunction with its own subject and verb in the midst of another subject and verb. So these are kind of tricky. And this is where you really have to think about the meanings of how phrases and clauses go together to build meaning. When we think of the job of a subordinating conjunction, it has two things that we could say that it does. It is used to introduce a dependent clause, which means it comes before subjects and verbs. And we know that if the dependent clause is at the beginning, then we have to add a comma at the end of that clause. We have to figure out where the clause ends and add a comma there. And so I want you to take a second right now, pause the screencast, and write as many subordinating conjunctions as you can without looking at your list. Your goal is going to be to get to 15. When you have your 15, go ahead and continue the screencast. We have some that begin with A, some that begin with a W, a U, a B, an I, and an S. So our mnemonic that we use for this is a Wubus. And we have to watch these ones that are in yellow. The ones that are in yellow can also be prepositions. So we know that if they're followed by a modifier and a noun, they're prepositions. If they're followed by a subject and a verb, then they're subordinating conjunctions. All right, I'm going to switch to my paper now. All right, we've got four sentences here, and we are going to look at the process that we go through to identify the way um, we, we figure out the type of sentence. So the first thing we need to do is go through, just like always, and look for prepositions. Now before, I know that before can be a prepositional phrase, but it's also one of our subordinating conjunctions. So when I look at it, it says before cell phones, and then there's a comma. There's no verb in there anywhere. So I know that this has to be being used as a prepositional phrase because it's preposition with a modifier and a noun. I see another prepositional phrase from so from pay phones, I see in, in the cafeteria, and I see to, and it's followed by a verb, so that must be an infinitive. And we are going to continue to remember that we will never ever both highlight and bracket. It's one or the other. All right, so my next step would be to look for any conjunctions to see do I see a coordinating conjunction or a subordinating conjunction, and I see that. That is a subordinating conjunction, and I'd ask myself that what? That were, or that were in the cafeteria. I know that were is always a verb, so I'd ask myself, well, what were in the cafeteria? And I would think, well, the payphones were, but payphones is not part of that dependent clause. So here's one of those instances where the subordinating conjunction refers back to the noun that it follows. 
but here's my dependent clause. It's got a subordinating conjunction with a subject and a verb, which means the rest of this has to be an independent clause. What's the subject over here? We, and what did we do? We had. So I can tell that this is a complex sentence because I found a subordinating conjunction followed by a subject and a verb. All right, let's look at the next one. You had to wait for your parents to drive all the way to the school after you called them. So I'm going to start at the beginning and look for phrases. I see to, to wait is an infinitive. For is a preposition. For what? For your parents. I see another to with a verb, to drive. To, well, I know that's not an infinitive because you can't the, so I'm going to look for a noun. To what? To the school. And then I see after. After is one of those that we have to watch out for. So I could say the phrase is after you. Now, if I take that out of there, the sentence would say, you had to wait for your parents to drive all the way to school called them. That does not work. So I know that after is being used as a subordinating conjunction after you called them. Called is the verb. Who called? You called. So this is a dependent clause, which means that the rest of this sentence over here has to be the independent clause. If I look over here, I'm looking for who's the subject. You are. And what did you do? You had. So that tells me this is complex. I found a dependent clause. It had a subordinating conjunction with a subject and a verb. All right, I want you to pause the screencast, try to do number three, and then come back here and check it. Um, and I'm going to tell you there's more than one subordinating conjunction here. So looking through the sentence, I don't see any phrases but I see several subordinating conjunctions. So one of them is right at the beginning, if. If what? If they did not answer. The subject in there is they. What did they do? This whole thing acts like the verb. They didn't answer. And I've got a transition here. This dependent clause is a transition too. And I'm just going to keep going through. You is not on my list. Hoped. A. Friend could give you a ride. Since is a subordinating conjunction. Since what? Since you had no idea. What's the subject in there? You. What did you do? You had. So here's a second dependent clause. And I know these WH words are subordinating conjunctions, so I see a third one. Where what? Where your parents were. Parents, in this case, is the subject, not a your. There's no such thing as a your. Your is a modifier. It's describing whose parents? Your parents. And we know were is always a verb. So I've got a third dependent clause. Now let's go look what's left. It says, you hoped a friend could give you a ride. Now, I see a lot of verbs in here, so this is a little bit confusing to me. So we're going to come back and talk specifically about the subordinating conjunction, that. Sometimes good writers eliminate that from the sentence. We could read the sentence and think about where could you add that. You hoped that a friend could give you a ride. And if I put that as my subordinating conjunction, that a friend could give you a ride. I've got a subject, friend, and what did the friend do? The friend could give. So there's another dependent clause. We didn't see that, but it's there. And that leaves this as my independent clause, you hoped. So that's an independent clause with one, two, three, four, dependent clauses. So that comes back to this idea that a sentence has to have one independent clause, but it could have more than one dependent clause. And this one did. So this is kind of the trick that we're going to focus on today is, look, is remembering and knowing that that sometimes isn't in the sentence. And when you see that there's an extra subject and verb in there, that's probably what happened. All right. 
Go try number four. You also needed to carry a quarter with you to pay for this, the phone call, which was really annoying. So you're going to pause the screencast, go try it on your own to find the phrases and the clauses, and then come back to check. All right, I see two. To carry is an infinitive. With is a preposition with you. To, well, I know pay is a verb, so there's another infinitive. For is a preposition for the phone call. So I'm left here with you also needed, which was really annoying. All right, so now I'm going to look for a conjunction. I don't see a coordinating conjunction, but I see one of those WH words, which. Which was really annoying. Well, I know was is always a verb. What was annoying? Which refers back to um, this idea of having a quarter to make the phone call. So I've got a dependent clause. Now I have to go find my independent clause. Going all the way back to the beginning, you as a subject, what did you do? Well, you didn't also, that's not an action. You needed. So there's my independent clause. An independent clause with only one dependent clause. All right, so that's just the practice that we're going through just to get through finding phrases, eliminating them so that we can easily or more easily find our subordinating conjunctions.